female. Please welcome Marilyn Boom Boom Belgum. <laughs> I thought the world would little note nor long remember what I say here, but they shall never forget what I wore here. <laughs> uh, it's a bit warm. Do you mind if I do a little uh, Lutheran striptease? <laughs> the trappings of success. <laughs> Oh, it's just wonderful to be making a comeback here at the Brown Livery Stable. <laughs> oh. I haven't gone too far. <laughs> well, I guess I should be a little more forthright with you. I, I almost went too far once. But it was way back in 1942. I don't think that should count. Do you? I want to tell you the circumstances. You see, it was during one of the wars. <laughs> and uh, I was young and inexperienced, like so many of the young ladies here. And uh, uh, I had a gentleman caller at the time who asked if he could escort me to Atwater, Minnesota, you know, for the purpose of enjoying a fish dinner. <laughs> he was one of our fighting men, I found out. And uh, he, uh, we started out... <laughs> And uh, we, we almost went too far. I, uh, we, we, we almost got to Wilmer. <laughs> but uh, we got off the bus. Everything was okay. <laughs> I know what you were thinking, sir. I could see your lips moving. Uh, I wasn't that kind of girl. Because, you see, I grew up in the Nelson Eddy, Jeanette McDonald tradition. And it was kind of a... <laughs> You know, the theology was one kiss, one man to save it for. <laughs> Isn't that quaint when you think of it? <laughs> uh, but that was the idea at the time. And I see some other ladies who were in that era, and I don't want to embarrass you or anything, but in light of what's happened, ladies, uh, are you ever sorry? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not complaining or anything like that, but actually I heard there are now four billion people in the world, one kiss, one man. <laughs> You know, a person can't help but wonder, can you? <laughs> well, let's move on to something a little more wholesome, shall we? <laughs> I'm a mother. I've raised six to maturity. Well, let's be honest, I've raised six. <laughs> and I often said over the years, if you're not funny when you start, you get funny. <laughs> Mothers, right? And uh, to be honest, that's the reason I came out of the broom closet about a year ago <laughs> as a stand-up comedian. And uh, don't feel bad what you thought when I came out here because I actually, I had the same idea myself. The thought came to me, perhaps you're too old for stand-up comedy. And then, you know, I kind of brightened up and I said, no, Reagan does it. <laughs> A lot of you have caught his show, haven't you? <laughs> State of the Union, that is funny, right? <laughs> well, he should be happy. He lives in public housing. <laughs> Guaranteed income. Free Christmas tree. That's what got me. <laughs> but, um, you know, um, it's such a nice crowd. I believe I can share a little more of myself with you. And um, I tell you, if you're Lutheran, and you're Scandinavian, and then you're a mother on top of it. It's a heavy load, isn't it, ladies? <laughs> and you know, sometimes, well, you just don't know how heavy it is, but I can share with you that I'm uh, into guilt. In fact, I'm rather heavily into guilt. But uh, I tell you, I didn't realize until the other day, I went to get my driver's license renewed, and the man said to me, where were you born, madam? I said, I was born in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. <laughs> well, I felt so bad after I said that. 
I mean, do you think I needed to share that much of my personal life with him? A simple public servant. You know, all the way home, like Scandinavians do, I kept rethinking it, and I wish I had just said Duluth and let it go. Well, there's another thing on my heart uh, today, and that is the whole subject of romance and words. You know, words are very potent things, used by commoners and kings. Many varied roles they fill. We c- they can serve or slay at will. How well we wives know that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I tell you, I think somehow words are different now. The romance has gone out of life. I don't know. I, I'd like to ask you, sir. You look <laughs> quite romantic to me, but... Uh, when did you last turn to your significant other and say to her, Would that I were a glove upon thy hand, that I might touch thy cheek? <laughs> a fortnight, he said. <laughs> oh, sir, forsooth, it's longer than a fortnight, I bet. In Minnesota, we have to say, Would that I were a mitten upon thy hand. <laughs> But, you know, my husband used to be incredibly romantic before we were married. That one day he turned to me and he said, Hail to thee, blithe spirit, bird thou never wert. <laughs> you know, I'm romantic, but I didn't even know what to say back to him. <laughs> but, you know, he's kind of gone downhill a little bit. And uh, the other day I was going to work and I said, I'm going to just perk up the marriage a little bit. And I turned to him and I said, Einer? See, his name is Harold, but you know, ladies, after 20, 30 years, change the name. It's so much more exciting. <laughs> oh, dear. I said, Einer, watch for me by moonlight, wait for me by moonlight. I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way. He said, will you be home in time to cook supper? <laughs> I said, Einer, my steps are nightly driven by the fever in my breast. And he said, I'll try to unthaw the meat before you get home. (laughs) But, you know, uh, I tell you, when you've been married a long time, it gets so incredibly boring, doesn't it? I mean, you've talked over every single subject known to man, haven't you? And the other day we were sitting at home, and uh, uh, he turned to me, and he said, well, I have to say, it was probably the most boring remark I've ever heard. He said... He said, dear, a girl who used to be in my confirmation class recently got a job with the telephone company. (laughs) Have you ever heard anything more boring? I thought, I gotta do something, this is just... (laughs) So I said, Roberto? (laughs) I don't know. You know, I just got carried away. (laughs) I said, Roberto, and I thought of something I didn't know the answer to, and don't tell me, but it, I said, Roberto, are piles and hemorrhoids the same medical condition, (laughs) or are they two separate conditions? Well, he brightened up right away. (laughs) And he said, he thought they were the same. And you know, I took the view, they're two separate conditions, you know? And I tell you, we had a real spirited discussion. (laughs) Just wonderful. Um, it's a sad world and I do want to close on a note of uh, a little philosophical note things my Swedish mother taught me she said be strong we are not here to play to dream, to drift we have hard work to do and loads to lift Shun not the struggle, face it, tis God's gift. I can't tell you how I hate that poem. (laughs) 